passé TV show. Ça passé. Ça passé TV. <laughs> ça passé TV show avec Guylaine Berry. Ça passé. Ça passé TV. Je dis à notre qui branche qui a regardé ça passe TV show. Nous sommes avec Serge Cadeus qui c'est un boxeur, un descendant haïtien, petit haïtien. Je dis à qui pourra le partager information ensemble avec nous même qui branche là qui ça savent les dit pour capable un boxeur qui a boxé ici aux États-Unis pendant que nous c'est haïtien. So haïtien fait tout bagay. Et je dis à ta souhaité nous qui branche, nous allons apprendre de Serge Cadeus et qui ça le fait, qui j'en que le fait et qui préparation que lui fait pour le capable de ça que l'a fait en là, qui c'est un professionnel boxer. Serge, hello, how are you? Oh, I'm doing good. Ça passe! <laughs> ça passe, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure having you here. Um, you know, Serge, I've been watching boxing since I was uh, uh, a kid, I should say. But I never thought that, you know, Haitians were interested much right. in boxing. And, and um, tell us a little bit about yourself, why you chose to be a professional boxer, and what got you into it? Okay, well, I mean, that's a great question. Um, again, like I tell everyone, I've always been an athlete. Um, in high school and college, um, I wrestled and I played football. Um, boxing uh, wasn't a love at first mm -hmm. sight. It was more so to keep me in shape for the other sports that I was doing, such mm -hmm. as track and boxing and wrestling of that nature. Um, I actually found love with boxing after a football injury in college. Um, I was injured for a year. I couldn't play football for a year. Mm -hmm. um, and I just ended up coming back home. And I was just so depressed. Um, so after therapy and, you know, after going through all the pain and struggles of trying to bend down all over again after a back injury that I did have, um, I wanted to get back into it. I wanted to get back into football. I wanted to get back into wrestling. But it just wasn't there. You know, my back injury was severe. Um, it was very difficult for me to get back in the weight room. Mm. Um, but boxing came back. Um, started training, and before you know it, a couple of days later, a coach came up to me and said, you know what, you, pretty ha you have good skills. Why don't you become, why don't you box for the amateurs and see how you do? Mm -hmm. um, at first, I was very timid um, based on it because I've never really boxed. You know, again, like I said, I, I box just for the fitness level mm -hmm. of it. Um, before you know it, amateur boxer, became a professional boxer. Um, the professional boxing came about in 2000, 2011. Um, my grandmother got sick, and we didn't have enough money to uh, perform for her surgery. Um, so what ended up happening is that we all came together eventually, and we put money um, towards her surgery. Mm -hmm. um, she had a uh, ruptured uh, uh, ovary or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, so I had, you know, she was old at the time, and, you know, but. Um, at the at at that at that point in time, I realized that if I wanted to help my family, I had to do something. It was either open my own business, which I had no problem doing, mm -hmm. or just become a professional boxer and start making money. Which is still a business, right? Which is still a business. <laughs> which is still. But they want to buy liquor. Um, no, not really. Um, just like any Haitian, <laughs> we were scared of spankings. Uh -huh. So you know, my brother and I, we were, we were we were on our best behaviors. I mean, I got in more trouble. Um, then my little brother, um, again, you know, my Fighting? aunt. Fighting? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. you had boxing in you since you were a jit? Uh, since I was basically, uh, I started boxing since I was 14 years old. I see. Yeah, I'm 27 now. Mm -hmm. 27? Yeah, I'm okay. 27 now. Well, that's good to know. So, nous même qui branché qui a regardé ça passé TV show, nous capable de connaître que si nous nous yo, si nous ouais que yo intéressé dans boxing, il y a une façon que yo capable de faire professionnellement. And uh, so, now you, you were, you also mentioned wrestling. Yes. So, uh, you were so as well, or do you think that it's better to be a boxer than a wrestler? Um, well, the same the same dif discipline um, occurs in wrestling. Um, you know, to be to be a Olympic folk style freestyle wrestler. That's the wrestling um, styles that we do in high school and college. Um, it takes the same discipline as far as a boxer, um, in the same sense of, you know, you have to maintain your weight. You know, if you're overweight, you have to lose weight. 
Um, you know, I tell people all the time, the most important part is not the work that you do inside the gym, it's the work that you do outside the gym. Because uh -huh. it's easy to have a coach in your face every day and telling you what to do. But it's outside of the coach that really, de that really depends on you. After practice, are you going to leave and go to McDonald's? Or are you going to leave and <laughs> perform and make sure that you're on your, eating your diets and, you know, drinking your protein shakes and making sure you're going out running and making That's sure... That's another job. You know, it's just a whole other job within itself, just like you stated. And, you know, um, I mean, being, to me, being a professional af af athlete is the epitome of my life, is the glow of my life, because it's, it's taught me and has taught me so much discipline. Um, and I apply that to my everyday life. You know, boxing to me... Um, besides inside the ring, it's also outside the ring. Hmm. Because in life, you know, you have difficult situations to where you fall. These are the one or two things that you're going to do. You're either going to take on the situation mm -hmm. or you're not going to take it on and you're just going to remain in that situation. Same thing in boxing. When you get knocked down, you can either remain down and you can lose or you can get back up and you can finish the fight. So le now let me ask you, because you are so devoted into um, being a boxer, yes. a professional boxer, um, do boxers make good money? Like at your level. Well, boxers make some good money. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting. <laughs> I wouldn't be doing it if it, if it didn't. Um, you know, at first it is slow, just like mm -hmm. anything that we do. You yes. Know? Um, but um, practice eventually, and consistency. Exactly. Practice mm -hmm. and consistency is very important. Um, and the mindset. You know, you have to have a mindset for this. Um, you know, I tell people all the time, I, I think I'm a little crazy. I mean, to <laughs> choose a profession where you get punched in your face all the time. Yeah. And I like to look pretty, so, you know, as you can see, I got the hair You cut. like to keep your pretty boy suave? <laughs> I, like, I, like, I like to, you know, suave. Um, but, um, you know, again, you know, it's just a mindset that you mm -hmm. have to have. You know, and it's not about, you know, who has the baddest attitude or who's the, who, who, who's the strongest fighter. Because, quite honestly, um, weights and things of that nature don't apply in the weight room. Mm. You understand? Because weights make you more heavy. Uh, before um, the interview, you mentioned that you're trying to lose weight. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? I am what I am. What you call? I am call. I am what you call a middleweight boxer. Mm -hmm. um, that means I average anywhere between oh, so, uh -huh. 153 to about 162. So right now I'm about 165. So, so I'm trying to do. get back down to like 160 just to make sure that um, you know I'm at the weight where I need to be for the fight. What a lot of people don't know, understand, um, know is that. Out looking in, you guys just see a weigh in. But what you don't understand, because it's a business, if I come in a pound over, I actually get fined. So, yeah, I actually get fined a percentage, and then I still had to lose that weight. Um, losing weight during competition can be very draining, depending on how heavy you are, because now you have to wear the sauna suits mm -hmm. and you have to go out running. So, you know, the comfort level is no longer there. You know, you're exhausted. You know, when you're going into a fight, um, especially the next day after, you want to make sure that you um, maintain uh, the proper uh, weight at, at first. You want to also make sure that you're able to eat mm -hmm. so you have nutrition within your system. Um, and you just want to make sure that you're comfortable and you're clear-minded. Yes. Um, so, you know, those, those things are very important. So, you know, losing weight the day before um, can be very exhausting. You know, so this is why we, again, you know, anything in life we do, we have to discipline ourselves. True. And, you know, this is the profession I chose, so I choose to discipline myself and make sure that I apply by those rules. Apply, discipline yourself in everything that you do and apply the rules. Yes. Okay. No, I'm a professional boxer, Serge Cadeus, who is a petit haïtien, descendant haïtien, and who is a professional boxer. So pour nous tous qui branchés là, le que nous retournons ensemble avec lui, il pourra dire nous qui gens que lui engagé dans aider ti jeunes yo tout dans communauté. On a regardé ça qui passe TV show avec Guylaine Berry. Jeune Neighborhood Medical Center, rémé patient senior citizen yo en pile. Docteur yo passe en pile temps avec patient yo. C'est chaque mois docteur yo vle wè patient yo pour prévention toute maladie. Staff la souriant et la plupart service médical yo wap gen yo la en dans Chien Medical Center. C'est ça que fait Chien, c'est meilleur centre santé pour personnage dans Sud Florida. Si ou ta rémé apprendre plus de Chien Neighborhood Medical Center, rédé 954 862 1640. 954 862 1640. 
Merci d'être que nous avons été branchés pour nous regarder ce qui passe TV show. Nous sommes Guylaine Berry. Et comme je vous dit nous déjà, aujourd'hui, nous sommes ensemble avec nous Serge Cadeus, qui est un professionnel boxer et qui pourra nous dire qui ça qui fait que nous continuer dans la lutte, nous continuer et la bataille comme un professionnel boxer et en même temps, nous pourra partager et qui est <laughs> secret succès ensemble avec nous. So Serge, um, I, I know that uh, you've been boxing for quite a while. Yes. You look very young to me, and you said that you're 27. 27. And uh, as a 27 young man, 27 year old young man that is in the boxing business, um, the people that are watching that would like to get to do some boxing or so, something else that has to do with being a professional in a business or whatever it, they choose to do what is the success what is <clears throat> what is the secret of your success oh wow that I keeps mean, you going that's probably the easiest question you're ever going to ask me don't quit don't quit keep pushing yourself mm -hmm. um besides boxing i'm also a youth motivational speaker and yes also, i was going to ask you uh, that question yes. because I, I know that you're very um <clears throat> what's going on very passionate i know that's something that you're very passionate about um, the youth our youth yes. and the young men when you go out there and you talk to the young men and the ladies yes. So um, what, why did you choose to be a motivational speaker? Well, um, you know, being a youth motivational speaker, um, besides just doing it, um, I feel like it's a gift from God. You know, um, everyone has their own individual calling. You have sac passe, I have boxing. Um, but among that, we also have other gifts given to us that uh, we look into. Um, youth motivational speaking has always been a passion of mine. I mean, I love dealing with children. Um, I have kids of my own. Um, but nowadays, the generation that we see raising up, it bothers me because it's different. Mm. You know, um, everyone's trying to be a follower. No one's trying to be a leader. And, you know, back in, back in my generation, you know, everyone was trying to be a leader. You know, everyone was trying to be the next Malcolm, the next Dr. Martin Luther King, the yeah. next Michael Jordan, the mm -hmm. next Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but nowadays, I just don't see that. Um, and, you know, it, it, really, it really does bother me because, like I tell these kids all the time, when you look in the, when you look in the sky after it rains, you see a rainbow. You yes. see all these beautiful colors. But the true rainbow is in front of us. However, it's broken. Why is it broken? Because this generation now, there's no form of humanity there's no form of trust there's no form of believing in your dreams anymore now it's just i'm just living so typically in my mind what, how i look at it is you're living but you're dead meaning that you're just living just to live so you might as well just be dead hmm. you know so you're just a walking zombie you understand so you know it's just the walk of the dead that's the name of this new generation the walk <laughs> okay. of the dead walk you know dead. so um my my mission within myself and the mission I've given myself and you know by the grace of God hopefully God has given me this mission as well because this is what I feel and God has given me to do is talk to these kids and give these kids give these kids a new light. Um, a lot of these kids don't understand that I was homeless for two and a half years. Oh wow! Um, and that never stopped me or drove me away from living my dream and wanting to become a professional boxer. There were times where I didn't know when I was going to eat. There was times where I didn't have a job. There was times where um, if I did have, have a job, it was just enough to pay for one bus fare. You understand? But it never stopped me from pursuing my dream. And this is what I need kids to do. Um, like we were talking earlier, um, you know, the biggest quote that I give these kids is a quote from Frank, uh, Frederick Douglass that says, without struggle, there is no progress. Without struggle, there is no progress. No progress. Without struggle, there is no, no progress. progress. And, you know, and you know, we have to understand that with every, with every task that we give ourselves or that we have presented in front of us or any obstacle that we have in front of us, we're not always going to succeed. There are times that, yes, we do need to fail in order for us to learn. We do need to make mistakes in order for us to become wiser people because this is what's going to lead us to become those strong leaders. And because we're going to be stronger leaders, other people are going to want to follow. 
But nowadays, we just don't have that. You know, we have, we have such a significant change in life now. We have a black president, Mr. Obama. Mm -hmm. You know, we have all this technology that's going on. And I feel that, you know, because of the changing and the changes that have been presented in front of this new generation has made them absolute to life and just hasn't made them that. You know? I'm mo you're just motivated. <laughs> like, <laughs> I got motivated from what you are saying. And um, the parents that are watching, the young people that are watching, I'd like you to really support what he's doing as a young Haitian man. And uh, Serge Cadeus is a professional boxer. Now, someone that is watching here today, and they would like to connect with you right. and or um, follow you, how do they do that? Oh, well, there's all types of different ways now. Uh, you guys can go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Serge Cadius. That's S-E-R-G-E-C-A-D-E-U-S. Or you can go ahead and uh, uh, like my fan page at www.facebook.com forward slash The Haitian Assassin. Also, hashtag Team T-H-A or hashtag The Haitian Assassin. I love it. Pour nous tous qui avons regardé là, c'était Serge Cadeus, qui est un professionnel boxer. Nous sommes Guylaine Berry et nous avons regardé ce qui passe TV show. Lorsque nous retournons, nous allons gagner un modèle, garçon, qui <laughs> pourra le faire cause ensemble avec nous sur ce qui passe TV show. Restez là, nous allons retourner. Tout Nom c'est Guylaine Berry et nous avons regardé ce TV show. Nous sommes ensemble avec un modèle professionnel. Ça veut dire que nous fashion. C'est M. Franklin, Franklin Murdo. Franklin Murdo a gagné quelques jours depuis que lui est un modèle professionnel. Côté que nous-mêmes, Haïtiens, nous toujours pensons que c'est plus femme qui fait modèle. Mais je dis, nous avons un garçon qui est ensemble avec nous et qui pourra parler de ce qui est fashionné, qui est modèle, qui ça ça veut dire pour lui, pour lui, euh, un modèle professionnel dans le monde ça, que nous vivons là, je ne dis Franklin, hi, how are you? Hello. Ça passe. Ça passe. Bien. Yes. So, um, uh, Franklin, you've been a model since when? 2009. 2009. Yes. Oh, that's a few years. Um, yes, quite a few, about seven years. Seven years. Yes. What got you into modeling? Well, I've always been into fashion. My mother, uh, she's always been a stylist. Mm. And she was my stylist. She did that a couple of times. She was a stylist for New York Fashion Week. With that being said, I was in a medical field, and I was like, you know, let me give fashion a try. And then um, I started modeling for a Florida Designer Expo, and then from that period of time, I did a Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week, I did Miami International, and I went to New York, and I got signed on the spot with the Ford agents. Interesting. Yes. So you were into medical, and yes. then from medical to fashion? Mm -hmm. I was an ultrasound sonographer. I did that for about eight years. And then you chose fashion? Yeah. Now, for the people that are watching here um, that love fashion, mm -hmm. I love fashion. Um, yeah, it shows. It definitely. <laughs> <laughs> like in some of the colors right there is really nice. Thank you. I just throw colors. Oh, like, really? I don't, yeah. <laughs> it must be good for you. I wish I had the ability to just throw colors like that. You have eyes for colors. That's okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. So, for those people that are interested in fashion um, and that would like to do modeling and stuff, what message do you have for them when it comes to fashion? Because a lot of times we think that is something that you do as a leisure, not mm -hmm. something that you take seriously. Well, that is something I take very seriously. The thing about fashion is this. You want to be a fashionista, not a fashion junkie, if I may. <laughs> what is the difference between a fashionista well, and a fashion junkie? A fashion junkie is somebody who would like put any name brands on. For example, they like me. Really? <laughs> Look at you. No, who, you whom I would call a fashion stylist, mm -hmm. a fashionista. For example, you like got the blue skirt. Look how you coordinate that. That most people are like. You know what? I'm wearing Gucci. I'm wearing um, Burberry. They just put them out there. They don't even coordinate. Ah. You gotta coordinate. You gotta give the audience. So something that's a digital. fashion junkie. That's a, a brain junkie. name junkie. Yeah, brain name <laughs> junkie. They just throw anything on. A fashionista to me is someone who you could give them just pretty much anything. They'll make them look good. You could give them, say, 
Boo Hoo and Da Da. I'm just throwing names out there. Yes. Like that. They still put them together, make it looks good. Uh -huh. They put it together like, wow, I like that. They very catchy with it. I no, see. I fit in that category, category quite well. I, I think I probably <laughs> fit in that category. Yeah, I definitely think you did. <laughs> <laughs> I like something that is well made, mm -hmm. well, uh, pre well, well sewed or well prepared. Mm -hmm. But um, when it comes to brand names, if it's well done, I don't mind that. Of course. Um, but I don't see why people spend so much money trying to get the brand name when your tag is not showing. <laughs> Well, again, that's a fashion junkie. You know, they you just love everything about fashion. But, Although I know that you model for some really high-end uh, oh, brand yes. names. I've done quite some there. I've Such as? Sean John. Mm -hmm. I've modeled for Ralph Lauren. I've modeled for D-Square. One Man Collection, one of my favorite things to do. I've modeled for Alice Kalenga. Alice Kalenga is a designer out of um, Africa. This guy is really great. You have also have George Hamilton, one of the classiest guys around, you know. And soon enough, I'm going to have my own blazer line. So I like that. Look out for that. Yes. Working and, on my and the hat. Yes. Yeah, oh, so definitely. that's one of them? That's one in the hat, but I didn't create this one. Oh, okay. But my, you see my hat line before yeah. I wish I'd have brought it. Oh, I have one. Yeah. Yes. I'm working on that. Coming very soon. <laughs> soon enough. <laughs> Wonderful. So uh, I know that you're also involved in um, Fashion Week, for Lauderdale Fashion yes. Week. Tell us a bit about that. For Lauderdale Fashion Week, is something different. I How did you get involved in that? Well, here's the thing about it Florentina West was the director of it and she saw my work and what I've done before she's like Franklin I gotta have you I'm like what do you mean you gotta have me so he was like uh, I gotta have you Mr. Coleman I was like okay if you throw Mr. Coleman in there I'm on board she's like boom I'm gonna make you the casting director I'm like perfectly fine the style is in the block and I'm like great so yesterday we did the cast and we had over 130 models that came through uh, I believe we had about 20 models from Wilhelmina we had 15 models from CS, the, the rest of them were from different agencies. It was great, and we're looking forward to that because we have Fashion TV covering that, we have BTV covering that, we have Pandora sponsoring us, Porsche Design, Island TV. And, and Sacpasse TV. And Sacpasse TV, definitely, <laughs> and Ice Out Floated TV as well is covering that as well. Nice. We're definitely looking for Sacpasse Media to be there. Okay, cool. Well, thank That's you. That's April 23rd. Remember that, the Bride Convention Center. Yes, um, I hope that my um, audience will be there and wow. participating. They will. They'll come out and support. They got to gotta come out and support the Oprah of the Haitian community. Oh. <laughs> I know. Definitely. Finn Gillenberry, but hey, that's yes. a good title to have. I'd like to have her money too, so I'm if looking for well. sponsors. If it will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so talking about the Fort Lauderdale um, Fashion Week, yes. how can people get tickets? Well, you can go to or you can go to www.flfashionweek.com, or you could contact me directly. Or you could reach me through Instagram at Franklin Myrtle, one word, F R N K L I N M Y R T L E, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and um, you could also call us, and we'll definitely reach out to you. Where did they call you? Uh, the number is five six one seven zero two five five zero eight. Okay, I'll try to remember it. I hope you... Again, that'll be 561-702-5508. Okay, cool. Um, so, nous capables de jouer un nous, le que nous contacter Franklin Murdo, et comme nous s'attendons pour l'Odedale Fashion Week, c'est dans le mois d'avril, le 23 avril, que la prend place. So, si nous avons regardé la vidéo, ça, après le 23 avril, nous avons programmé pour l'année prochaine, si Dieu veut. But, Franklin, have you modeled for some Haitian designers? Unfortunately, I have yet to model Not for the yet? Haitian models. What? I'm like, I'm looking forward to model for Haiti Fashion Week. They have yet to con contact them. So you know where to contact Franklin. Yes. So Numem Key say uh, Haitian designer, hook him up. Okay? Listen, Franklin Murdo. If London could fly me out there, <laughs> Paris could fly me out there, I'm like, I'm Haitian American. I think American. he's qualified. Listen, I'm Haitian American. Y'all got to bring me to Haiti and do the thing, the headline of the whole. Now, I'm, I'm available. Whenever you guys are ready, I'm available for that. Yes. Well, kudos to you for you. all your accolades and also working um, with some high-end uh, people that are in the fashion industry, whether it's um, the UK whether it's um, Paris, <laughs> <La> Paris. Uh, <laughs> uh, Paris. Um, so I think that it is important that we know who we have as some celebrities in the Haitian community. And Franklin, 
this is like wonderful. I've seen you at work, I've seen yeah. you modeling, and uh, I think this is a great thing to have you as a Haitian American doing the work that you do. Mais faut nous pas reconnaître que c'est c'est pas l'autre monde pour nous quitter reconnaître Haïtien nous yo ka fait gros bagaille mais nous même Haïtien tout en nous ba yo encadrement en nous ba yo encouragement et que j'aime yo ka contact toi encore Franklin what's the address the contact information You can contact me on Instagram at Franklin Murdo the be one word F R A N K L I N M Y R T L E it's the same thing on Facebook LinkedIn Twitter, or you contact me via email, AaronMurdo84 at gmail.com, or you go to Fort Lauderdale Fashion, which is www.flfashionweek.com. Wonderful. So, um, Franklin, for some women that would like to be a fashionista, mm -hmm. what message do you have for us women? <laughs> I said keep it classy. Once you keep it classy, ah. it's always better that way. Perfect example? We have it right here. Well, Just keep it at you. the beautiful Miss Barry here. <laughs> keep it classy as usual. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So, um, pour nous tous qui branchés, qui avons regardé ça qui passé TV show, nous sommes ensemble avec nous aujourd'hui. Hein? C'était Franklin Burdo, qui est un professionnel dans euh, la question fashion et c'est un modèle également qui est en charge de Fort Lauderdale. Fashion, Fashion Week, week yes. and I'm proud of you for that. Oh, thank you. And um, pour nous-mêmes qui t'as aimé contacter, les autres bas informations là. Et pendant que nous regardé émission ça, nous t'as souhaité que nous partager information avec l'autre monde pour que nous regarder ça qui passe TV show. Et on a fait tout effort pour nous porter plus information pour nous. Nous t'as regardé ça qui passe TV show. Encore une fois, nom c'est Guylaine Berry. Nous t'as souhaité que nous rejoignions nous chaque jour sur 1580 AM pour nous capables d'attendre cause et femmes tous les jours à partir de 3 heures ou bientôt sur ça qui passe c'est media.com et pour nous même qui branchez là ça passe TV show c'est ton plaisir pour nous rentrer la caille nous jeudi à bientôt